it's Bumbleberry, and we're here with chapter 8, Transience. What is in me? Oh, what in me is dark? Well, no light, but rather darkness visible. But that is not me. Whoa, hearts! There was a flying thing. What is in me is not me. I fought with it, lived with it, survived. Yet we become what we subdue. If this is true, then I was never myself. Oh, you were naked for a second. I am not a monster. Then what are you? Tired. Did you even really love me? Or were you just hungry? It's hard to divide that line sometimes. Hunger hovers over every action I take. Maybe I was bored. That's sweet of you, Gilly. Truly. Marvelously classy. What are you doing in my dream, Catherine? I came to punch you in the face. Nice. And then perhaps... Say goodbye. Pain wells up in my throat and I answer it with anger. Goodbyes are pointless. I have no need for them. You're just another voice in my conscience that will fake conscience that will fade away in time. No, I am not. You're still a jerk, mind you. But I love you still. And I loved you. But does that matter now? I will love another one quite like you in the future. Rude! You know, I can always tell when you're lying to me. Your mouth does that little twitch and your nose flares up like you smell something bad. That man you knew is gone. He was nothing but an illusion. You yourself designed, my dear. I only adapt. Then why do you still do it? How can I still tell you're lying? I'm not. Liar? Ooh. That's really pretty. You were holding a telescope. I don't see it. Sagittarius is over there, I laughed, pointing your hand to the night sky. Beneath this blanket of stars, the brightest one was sitting right beside me. Would you believe me if I say I never meant to kiss you? But I'm glad I did. I had hoped you wouldn't see my hand shake. In your eyes, I feel like I am somebody worth loving. I am a lie, but that was the truth. The arrow you struck my heart with worked both ways, Malchain. I have loved you since I was a child. And you had to keep this mask on for years. Longer than you usually had to. But you see, when you become something for a long time, it imprints on you like a seed. Maybe you liked keeping this face, Malchain. Your cat died today and we buried it in my garden. You were crying so hard. Nobody could comfort you. Candies or sweets or bribes never worked. In my desperation, I said, everything dies. As if this was a truth worthy to be told to a child. Did you know the baker's dog also died? Things die, so please don't be upset. Your eyes stared up at me. To my surprise, you began to laugh. Gilly, you're such an idiot. The baker's dog also died? Are you really trying to cheer me up? No, that's not the greatest thing to say. I shifted uncomfortably in my boots, but your laughter had you in stitches. You took away my love, but you can't take away my memories. Memories falter and fade. When you have lived as long as I have, memories are cheap. Love is cheap, Catherine. So would you please leave me now? I don't want to remember you anymore. You're still lying, bro. Because you waited years for love. Years. I don't want this. I... Once upon a time, there was a man who lost his heart. So he eats others. I never lost it. I have always been cursed without it. Then take mine. Yours. Take my love with you until the end of time. You will never go hungry again. 
That's not true. You hated me at the very end, like everyone else. Well, you ruined my life, so of course I hated you. You lied to me. You used me. But love and hate can be so similar. It's as simple as flipping a coin. But don't give me apathy, Guillaume. I want my memory to burn as bright as a star in your mind. And this memory I want you to remember me by is not my body hanging lifelessly by a rope. She's so cute. Remember me as the child who loved you, my dear Kian. I love you. I forgive you. An unfamiliar bitterness washes over my tongue. It threatens to sting both my eyes with tears, quenching my throat with pain. Curiously, it is a sensation almost foreign in its rarity. Love. Is it possible? Can I love a memory? Can I survive with only your love to give me sustenance? I take a step towards you. This is not going to end well. Oh gosh. What? 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 Something stirred in my dreamscape and suddenly you are not there anymore. Oh, oh, you were hanging. You were dead. That was rough. I see you in the distance, a semblance of your visage upon the grassy hill. The sky is dark. The moon hangs ominously upon your head. Catherine, run! Oh, it was him. But you cannot hear me. My legs are draped in clear jelly. In dreams, everything is slow. I cannot get to you in time. Um... You've changed. And I'm sorry, I paused for a second to take a look at the picture and I forgot to resume the recording. So this is about as far back as I can go for this. Basically, this thing is the monster that eats stuff. Behold my true, glorious form. Humans are insatiable. Men and women, they are all rabid for love. How many times have you been their toy? Humans are cruel to the things they desire. I must be powerful. I must be on top. I control them instead of them controlling me. I will not be a piece of meat. Never again. Your face softens, and the grip on my neck drags me closer to your lips. Yuck. You clean my mouth with yours, and it tastes just like honey. Spit ropes between our lips. Uh, if you wanted to get a closer look at uh, the grossness there. That is what it looks like when two people are drooling on each other. Love is my sustenance. Love is my sustenance. I will take what I can, because they are so willingly. Also, the the thing is um, a combination of all the people that he's like eaten. So there was one Psyche. So Eros and Psyche are um, in mythology. They were put together, and Psyche was actually banished from Eros when she looked upon him in the light. Like she dropped candle wax on him, actually. And that's when he woke up in the night, because he told her not to look on him, so she thought he was a monster or something. But anyway, so he's eaten a lot of people. They look most like Catherine right now, but it's a combo. The monster takes on the form of the people he's eaten and distorts it. There are obviously guys in there, too. I must get rid of this dastardly spell I am under. Just playing with my mind. Catherine is gone like her memory. In the end, this was all an old, vile magic. A cheap parlor trick. I was awake. Whoever touched me will pay. Yes? Guillaume woke up with the dream still fading from his memory. And your room is no longer pulsing. Oh, because it's Catherine's room, it's not his room. This did not surprise him. Whoever cast the spell did not do so on a whim. To take him away from his sanctuary was to render him weaker. A pure white candle flickered on the table. Its flame looked as though it was ready to go out. I couldn't save you. I tried. You know, son.
Rosa stepped out of the shadows. You? Kiam stared at her with irritation. What is the meaning of this, Rosa? This is your doing. She looked at him with sadness. I was too weak to save you, Kiam. Save me from what? From what you are. Kiam's face crumpled into confused anger. I didn't expect such contempt from someone I trusted. Do you expect me to ask your forgiveness for what I've done, sire? Because I won't. I will stand by what I did. I will do it again if I can. But such a spell requires much preparation. You are not to do that again, do you hear me? I will not allow myself to be subjected to such an insult. I'm not trying to do something that petty. I'm trying to save you. I do not know what you are talking about. If you persist in this foolish behavior, then I will be forced to take action. Go ahead. But I will simply try again. Stop it. <gasps> He's being mean. Giam grabbed her by the shoulders in irritation and shook her. They stared at each other in heavy silence, and Guillaume somewhat regretted his forcefulness. But Rosa did not flinch or look away, even at his outburst. There was no fear or fragility in her eyes at all. She held her steady gaze until it was Guillaume who looked away. Why... why are you doing this? You should know how pointless it is. I had to try, Guillaume. If there is a way to save you, I'm inclined to take it. I had hoped Catherine's memory might work on you. Giam, I cast a spell to give you her memory, so you don't have to resort to feeding. Giam recoiled from- Oh man, he looks really angry. I've never seen him look that way. Giam recoiled from her like her skin was scalding to the touch. You. How did you? Rosa just stared at him, her eyes clear and resolute. I know what you are, because we are the same. We are creatures that emanate desire and feed on love. I have lived with this curse knowing only a semblance of what I am. Mother taught me how to control it, even in her own twisted way. I was lucky, Gian. I wasn't alone. But you were. Rosa's eyes bloomed with sadness. I mean, that's kind of why I didn't kill him. Like, I think, I don't know. I'd feel bad if I did. I mean, he deserves it, of course, because he's, like, eaten a bunch of people, but he's also just surviving. I can only imagine how hard that must have been. Giam staggered back in shock. So there was another like him. A desperate hope clutched onto him like talons. Was that why he'd taken care of her? Oh, he had taken to her without wanting to feed on her. That's why I'm doing this, Guillaume. I wanted to give you Catherine's memory. Like how Mother's memory keeps me sustained. Love doesn't have to be taken like this. There are other ways. Guillaume frowned indignantly. Don't you think I have tried that? You're still very young. I can tell. I have already endured centuries of this curse. I know all the tricks to survive. From strangers to the villagers. I know how much I can take. I am meticulous. Then why must you insist on this method? He's smiling, Mr. Evil Pants. With no reason to stand for ceremony, Guillaume's face changed easily. Rose's jaw clenched. She was talking to a stranger now. His face lost the virtue that once belonged to a blameless man. It was replaced by a curious, cheeky grin. A perpetual look of childlike mischief. The man irritated her, and yet somehow Rosa felt like she had known him for a lifetime. He'd always been there, hadn't he? Or rather, it had always been him. Why? Because it is fun, and the taste is worlds better. Mean? The experience of drawing out love is unlike any human feeling. It is transcendent. It is the only moment I feel alive. The only moment I feel like a god. You have face issues. Like, what is happening up there? 
Once you have had a taste of it, nothing else compares. You must try it. I bet you can only afford to be self-righteous because you don't know any better. You're wrong. I did it to Catherine. I tasted her love, but I was able to stop myself in time. I knew it would destroy her. So that was you, hmm? It makes sense that Catherine's love for me waned. That's never happened before. Desire can be controlled, Guillaume. I do not wish to control it. Why should I? Admit it, you've longed for that taste since your tongue dipped in its pot. Rosa did not speak. She shifted nervously on her feet. Gian went on. We are given this curse to endure, Rosa. Why must we scutter in the corner and humble ourselves? To whom do we abdicate ourselves through? To normal people. They are beneath us. For all their achievements and talents, love is the one thing that can drive them mad. Oh, she looks so sad and wet. Like, what is going on? Don't you see? Their weakness is the one thing we feed on. It is the natural order. Yum stepped closer to her and touched her bare arm. He tried to hide his bliss. I told you before, if you need power, then be powerful. I will teach you how to wield it. You still have much to learn. If you will join me, Rosa, imagine what we can do. We will be powerful, you and I. Rosa's momentary confusion faded. The hard look appeared on her face once again. I will never join you. You use people for your gain. So? Fair enough. <laughs> Yam's voice couldn't keep from rising. What of it? Isn't it the rule of human existence? It's all a game, Rosa. A game I play to win. So people's lives are a game to you? Giam shrugged. Of course they are. Humans use and abuse and they throw away on a whim. They destroy for no apparent reason except that they want to. It took me the longest time to understand why. I realized it is simply their nature. He looks like so smug. I want to wipe that smile right off your face. Humans don't play fair. But I do. And I still get ahead. Rosa's eyes narrowed at Guillem. How can you throw people away so easily? Don't you see that there are good people? Like Catherine. You're afraid to remember. You're afraid to give them the worth they deserve. You rejected her memory, content to forget her value. Kim was silent for a few moments. Then he gave a low snicker. Rosa, Rosa, Rosa. That is an amusing thesis. He looked at her dumbfounded face pitifully. Another chuckle escaped. Kim couldn't help it. You got me all wrong, Rosa. I do not undervalue people. In fact, I love them. I revere them. I am grateful. They sustain me, after all. You were just talking about how they're like worthless scum, nature to destroy. That alone deserves all the appreciation and care I can give. I loved Catherine with every fiber of my being. She was a kind soul. She tasted perfect. But I think you underestimate how long I've been on this dirty, forsaken rock. Good people are not rare and precious treasures. As such, they are not to be handled any differently from the rest. What? <laughs> All this talk about worth. Do you mean some people are worth more than others because they are kind? What if from now on I only consume bad people? Or how about those in the lowest caste of society? Ruffians, rapists, thieves. It is easy to be kind when you are privileged. But those poor unworthy souls, surely no one would miss them. Would that make you feel better? Rosa faltered. That's not what I'm saying. That is exactly what you are saying. 
You're telling me I shouldn't feed because there are good people out there that deserve better. So if they're bad, it is all right. How terribly judgmental of you. No, I... Every human being has the capacity for kindness or cruelty. So do you. To judge somebody on such a volatile detail, that is prejudice. After all, a kind man can mull the death of his fellow man. No sooner than a criminal can turn a new leaf. The truth is, there are no good or bad people. There are just... people. And I'm not picky. <laughs> oh, Guillermo's soliloquy was unlocked. Stop saying that. You don't really believe that, do you? You hurt like me. You want acceptance, like me. I know deep inside you want something more. More than feeding or craving. You've written as much in your diary. You sneaky little minx. Didn't I tell you you were not supposed to touch that? Stop! Please stop this, Guillaume. I implore you. Her pleading face stirred something in Guillaume, but the callousness in his heart had decades to harden. He snorted. Or what? What do you plan to do, little girl? Is this it? Is this your plan? Yes, I'm going to stand here and judge you. <laughs> Put on a light show and talk me to death? Surely you didn't think it would be that easy. If you have a different offer, I'm all ears. Hmm, I thought as much. Well, good talk. Albeit a little pointless, I'm sure you'll agree. Is that what you think of Catherine, then? Nothing but... Cattle. Guillaume wince despite himself. I loved Catherine. I know you, too, loved her completely, whether you want to admit it or not. You can't take love without giving it, can you? Guillaume sighed annoyance. Just another spoke in the old fun wheel. You're lying if you say you're not the least bit troubled by your actions. That's a start, Guillaume. The first step. It means you are not as cold as you want to appear. If you admit your guilt and take responsibility for her death, Guillaume waved her away with an indifferent scoff. I refuse. Her death was her own decision. I had no hand in that. What? She reaped what she sowed and I collected. That is all. With this validation, the assured smile came back to his lips. He shrugged. Who knows, maybe she could have gotten better over time. Most people bounce back from the loss of love. Or not. Who really knows? Is it my fault she gave me everything? I didn't ask her to. You did! Which was only fair. Like you said, I didn't hold back. It was an equal exchange. Rosa's throat went dry. What does that mean? Oh, love. Love is the strongest force in the world, but it is never pure. Always tainted. Always poisoned. What are you talking about? Well, I hate to shatter the vision you have of Catherine, but she wasn't so righteous. She was as selfish as everyone else. What? Think back, Rosa. Did you really think her sister's death was a complete accident? Wasn't it convenient? Ooh, Amelie's fate unlocked. Wasn't I convenient for little Miss Peride? Yes, of course. Convenient and perfectly adequate. Sweet, boring, obliging Marquis de Gaulle. Wasn't he so easy to love? He could help her achieve her grand dreams. Give her the good life that hovered just beyond her reach. After all, Guillaume didn't seem to have plans of his own, did he? As if satisfied to exist only for her. Honestly, what a catch. What an impressive pedestal. So he didn't see him, his mask as human, even. Even when the core of this love poisoned her, she made no attempts to leave. I wonder why... Hmm, now there's a question. Why indeed? Because she had hope, Guillaume. 
she stayed hoping her feelings for you would return. That was how much she loved you. Gim scoffed. How sweet of you to say. You really thought Catherine stayed with me just for love. And not at all because she was scared, insecure, comfortable. Gim tapped his chin in mock contemplation. Or maybe she just wanted so badly to be a Marquis's wife. Such a proud girl she was. Must she settle for anything less? That will show all the people who used to scorn and underestimate her. They who gossiped about her family. That will show them. Oh no, Rose is not as confident. I won't believe it. Catherine was a kind person. So what? Does it matter? Does being kind justify selfishness? Does being kind even save anyone? Yeah, it saved Rosa. You. You are. Heartless. Maybe. It has been so long I can tell. Always the love of self is first, Rosa. I don't take it personally. Shut up! Do you ever get tired of justifying your hunger? So Catherine wasn't perfect, yet you simply pass the blame. All just excuses. The truth is, you just don't want to stop, do you? You're no god, no higher being. You're nothing but a common vampire, a monster. Giam's face twitched. Feeding on the love of the people who love you? Well, killing them is really bad. Feeding on love? Natural, as long as you give it back to replace it, you know? You must know how wrong that is. Guillaume's fist shook visibly, but he kept his smile. His voice remained pleasant and calm. So you compare me to storybook monsters now, Rosa. How insulting. But yes, wouldn't it be easier if I dined on blood or flesh? Something tangible. Something physical. That would be so much simpler. After all, if I drink blood, I wouldn't have to tangle with their lives. He turned to Rosa his eyes burning and she could feel the heat in his stare. I wouldn't have to be sane. Gam's voice shook with anger. She flinched. You self-righteous minstrel, how dare you talk to me about guilt? How dare you call me a monster? Did she just, like, flicker? You chastise me singing songs of praise for the greater good. Have you ever tasted your own betrayal on the lips of the person you love? Do you know what it's like to strangle hope with your own hands? I look into their eyes and I see them die from the inside out. Am I worth it? Am I worth all their lives? Never! But I do it again and again and again and again, just for the right to exist. You read my journal and act like you know me. You know nothing. I wish I was a monster. Maybe then I wouldn't have to feel. The silence reigned between the two of them. So you do feel guilty. You're just callous to it. Guillaume's face went blank after his outburst, almost confused as at the words that came out of his mouth. He forced his lips into a placated grin. Pardon me, I... I didn't mean to shout... He took a deep breath and refused to speak again. Rosa buried her face in her hands. He was right. She had come here with an overestimation of herself. Her ethics were the cries of a child. How could he listen to someone immersed only in her own tender ideals? If she wanted to help him, she had to know his pain. But what could she say? Her mind struggled with the words. They all sounded artificial in her head. All she could do was hold out her hand to reach for him. Couldn't she? She could offer him hope, a little warmth away from the chunk of ice beating inside of him. She approached him tentatively. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have spoken such hateful words. <laughs> but don't you see? You don't have to endure this pain anymore. I'm offering you a different path, Guillen. Let me help you. He didn't speak nor move. Rosa held on to the pain she saw in his eyes a moment ago. It was her only hope. 
but if there ever was a trace of it in his face, it had flitted away before it took substance. His abject face contor contorted into a grin. He chuckled. Then his laughter filled the room. Cold, bitter laughter that chilled her skin into a shiver. Rosa drew her hand away in fear. You really don't get it, do you? I meant to say that is what makes it substantive. It is. Precious. What? Make no mistake, I endure all this not for something as silly or disposable as blood. Love. Love is worth all the pain. The best wine tastes like the dirt from which it was exalted. Rose's mouth dropped in horror. She stepped away from him. A cold shiver passed her spine. No. No. No, Guillem. She stared at him, grasping at the flicker of hope that came as fast as it went. What is happening? He had built the kingdom from the maze of his own heart. Both ruler and prisoner, both exalted and doomed. She could feel the cracks in his armor, the crumbling of a wall. He wanted to get out. Rosa thought she saw light in his darkness, a hand reaching out to be saved. <laughs> but where was it now? Where was this hope? It was... gone. Had it ever been there at all? Or did her desire to help him trick her into seeing what she wanted to see? Rosa bit her lip to steal herself. Oh, don't look at me like that. I had the same morals as you when I was younger. But time smooths out our rough ideologies. I was wrong. <laughs> I thought I could still save you. You are quite full of yourself if you think you can save people. Gam took a step towards her, and Rosa's throat closed up. Get away from me. I'm not going to hurt you, Rosa. If you wish to debate philosophy further, we can do so for a thousand more years. But aren't we ignoring the single most potent truth? We found each other. So many souls running around the earth, and we actually managed to meet. Do you realize how momentous this is? I can give you love, Rosa. Forget Catherine or your mother. How does he know about Mom? How do you know about Mom? They are remnants of a bitter past. How long are you going to hang on to their memories anyway? Don't look so troubled, darling. Enough of such moody, sentimental topics. They bore me. Instead, why don't we start thinking about possibilities? <laughs> Giam, please. She was still bent on changing his mind, but Giam could tell. Her resolve had all but fizzled out. That's super depressing. Oh, the idealistic hopes. Oh, again, you still haven't given up? I'll admit you have some spirit. It's admirable you'd go to such lengths for me. I mean it when I say I'm honored. But you're so naive. Tragedy is everybody's friend, Rosa. If you stay with him too long, his smell will linger on your skin. I don't much care for tragedies myself. I am more interested in opportunities. And what we have right now is a dawning. A beginning. Gam stepped closer to Rosa, touching her cheek with his palm. Oh, God. Rosa was afraid, but she didn't make any attempts to run away this time. Mm, no. Aren't you glad you found me? Why is she wearing such a sexy outfit for this, by the way? You're not alone anymore. You don't have to hide and cower to subject yourself to the motions of this cruel life. Enough of this fascination for glorified sacrifice. Uh-oh. Come with me. Rosa stared up at him. What? Come with me, Rosa. He separated his words with a cheerful smile. Let us leave this place and go far away. Start over. Doesn't that sound grand? She's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> it's about time you let go of the bad memories and face something new. Don't you think you owe yourself that much? And what of the vic- What of the victims? What about them? What's about them? He looks so bored and, like, done. 
I care little for strangers. It is you I want to make happy, Rosa. Please let me. I need you as much as you need me. Rosa bit her lip. Mother, I need you right now. Please let me hear your voice. She struggled with the pain in her heart. She was free falling. Mother? To hear her mother's voice. She had always been the ground she stood on. Both the pain on her bare feet and a place to stand. Whether she walked or chose to fly, that ground would be there when she landed. Such was the role of family. You've gone this far, darling. I trust in you. Whatever you decide, I will always be here. Like how I always have been. Rose's jaw clenched. She tasted the caustic realization in her mouth. Rosa? <gasps> and that was when he felt icy pain shoot through his chest. He looked down. There was a knife sticking out of him. The knife Rosa had stolen from the kitchen. I'm sorry. The blade clattered to the floor. Rosa's lip quivered. You need to keep it in there, girl. But I have to make this right. Gam's body lost all strength. He slumped on the floor, blood staining his shirt red. He just laughed in amusement. Oh, you stupid girl. So this is your response to my generous offer? Ugh, oh, how trifling. I expected better from you. Kiam winced in pain. Been a while since I was <laughs> stabbed. Been a while? She knelt beside him. She didn't speak at once. That the wound will not heal like the others, Kiam. Oh? I must end it here. For Catherine. For Mother. For all your victims. For you. I have to do the right thing. She said this aloud, but she only half believed it. The right thing. Was there such a thing? Rosa reveled in this confusion. The least she could do was carry the burden of her choice for the rest of her life, instead of forgetting. She had considered simply leaving him, unchanged and a prisoner of his own twisted ideals. She still could. If she reversed the spell now and allowed him to heal, then he would survive. Young, powerful, and healthy, but unchanged, and carrying the same shadow in his heart. She had tried, hadn't she? Whatever he did next should be none of her concern. There was a pinch in Rose's chest. But to know that he... Wait a second. Oh, she couldn't do that because she would have doomed him to make the same mistakes forever. She would stop caring about him and degrade him into nothing but a failure. It seemed crueler somehow. It would make her... like him. Guillaume sat up wordlessly, his back pressed on the wall. This pain was different. The blood hadn't stopped leaking from his chest. He coughed and liquid flooded his lungs. It was getting harder to breathe. Part of him wanted to ask how she had found a way to kill him. It had seemed quite pointless now, and a waste of precious breath. He sat there bleeding, willing himself to anger. He thought of threatening her, demanding her to do something, but he didn't. He was surprised to find something else in his heart. Gratitude, of all things. Whoa, not expected that. Rosa held Guillaume's hand as the blood continued to pour out of his wound. Dimly, Guillaume reflected that she really did have spirit the courage to do what he could not. He used the last of his strength to lift up his hand and wipe away her tears. Don't cry. I'm fine with this. His hand lingered on her face for a while. He searched his heart for anger, for bitterness for this girl. But there was none. How curious it was to feel the steel in his heart and yet no hate for its wielder. How curious it was to know that this was all an act of love. Rosa, you are an anomaly. You confuse me. Maybe if he had listened, would he have... Maybe she was right. He could change. But it was too late for him, wasn't it? It had been too late for him decades ago. Long after he had degraded life, including his own, as pointless and petty. That was the only regret. I wish... I wish we had met sooner. He took a deep breath. 
The pain in his chest throbbed with every breath. Still, it was only a distant buzzing in his mind. The pain was simply white noise. Rosa held his hand tighter. I'm sorry, I... Apologizing again? I thought I've made myself clear with that. Gam coughed and tasted metal in his mouth. He chuckled and wiped it away. Rosa, I was never strong enough to endure this life. But it looks like you are. That's good. You'll stay with me for a while, won't you? Please? Yes, Kiem. Take my journal with you. It might help. I would still wish for you to start anew. Board the ship, the papers. Take the money in my office. Use it to build a new life. Maybe. I don't know. Guillaume coughed out red flecks of blood. He swallowed and his throat felt like it was on fire. He had a lot more to say. A lot more to tell her. Like why my room is alive. Or why his room. He tried to speak as clearly as he could despite the bulge climbing up his windpipe. Avoid small towns. They don't take to strangers kindly. You'll stick out like a sore thumb. Always present yourself as nobility or a person of influence. Give people another reason to think you're desirable. Otherwise they will fear and hate you, confused by their own urges. His breathing was getting erratic. Also remember to... <gasps> what? Rosa leaned over and kissed Guillaume's lips to stop him from speaking. This is rather shocking. I was not expecting them to go here, but I guess uh, it's sentimental. Wait. So she kissed his lips to stop him from speaking. They were cold now, but they were still sweet, laced with the salty taste of blood. She remembered the taste of them in her mouth from the first time she had met him. He kissed her? I don't remember that. The way he had filled her with a sweetness so strong and that her mouth had watered. The taste she had... It had never left her throughout the years that had passed. Perhaps it never would. How could something so corrupt be so sweet? Rosa touched his face and fresh tears fell from her eye. How could something so beautiful be so ugly? Love is bittersweet is the achievement. I... I love you, Kian. He was her poison. She would remember him only with regret. Love and pain mixed like water and salt. But she would remember. Poison and cure is what it says. I love you, she whispered. But Guillaume didn't seem to hear. His eyes were closed, and every breath seemed shorter than the last. Death gave the heart a final gift of bliss. He savored this. Thank you, Rosa. The two of them crouched alone in a corner, cherishing each other's warmth for as long as it lasted. The candle's wick expired, and the room was plunged into darkness. Darling? Yes, Mother? I know it was hard. Mother didn't sound spiteful or on edge this time. She was simply serene. Rosa got up, looking down at him one last time. Mother? I cannot get rid of the feeling that I should have done things differently. Should I have done more? Should I have sacrificed more? Oh, it wants me to play it again. Tears once again stung her eye. I wish I could go back time and change anything. I feel so powerless. I understand. Loss will always hurt, my darling. It makes us vulnerable. But you must know changing things does not guarantee happiness. Do you understand? Yes. Oh, my darling, I wish I was there to hold you. What are you going to do now? Ooh. I don't know. Whichever direction you head, I will be with you. I know you will, Mother. Your presence saved me, as it always does. You remind me that nothing should... Nothing... Oh, wait. You reminded me that nothing lost should be thrown away. <laughs> Catherine, Kiem, and you will always be with me. I'm not alone. I'm proud of you, my beautiful daughter. 
Mining class map and you know, wonderful. The first rays of light sl slipped past the window and touched her face. Rosa left the room to welcome the dawn. Closure is an achievement. Ending two, dawning. I'm guessing there's a true ending in there somewhere. So we killed Guillaume, and we got a kiss beforehand. I don't think I could have saved him. I mean, do you? I I don't think so. Maybe the, in the true ending you can, but I get the feeling that... Oh. What is this? Your main purpose is revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. You loved Rosa despite your misgivings. You left Guillaume's locket closed. You told Rosa that family is the most important thing. You convinced Rosa that Catherine was selfish. You wanted to read more of Guillaume's journal. You took his key. You admitted killing Guillaume might not be the only answer. 35% complete. So, I mean, you can't really convince Rosa anything else about Catherine, right? I mean, Catherine is kind of selfish. Not that she's the most selfish. She was very selfless in the fact that she helped us come into the um, Marquis' house. I don't know. What do you guys think? What was your first ending? Do you want to see some other ones? Like, obviously, I'm not going to replay the whole game and, like, record it. But if you like, I can do some other endings. I don't know how I feel. I kind of want to see the other endings because I just... I want Guillaume to be free of this shadow on him. But I know one of the endings is going to be um, Rosa running off with him and being a succubus. But I also want to find out about Rosa's backstory. Like, where's her dad? How did her mom die? Like, why is she with her always? I don't... I don't know. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. And please comment, like, and stay sweet. I'll see you guys for the next game whatever it is i have one visual novel in the works um i was thinking of doing it's called amnesia not the horror game but anyway if that one's too long or you're not interested just let me know but otherwise that's my next visual novel planned but who knows the world is a mystery psychonauts is also kind of closing up so we'll see if there are any other games on the horizon feel free to leave uh, comments as far as what you recommend and take care